Greetings and welcome to this edition of Pharmacy Focus here at the University of Charleston's School of Pharmacy. We're getting ready to start the 2016-2017 academic year and it's going to be a fantastic year. For your enjoyment, we're going to have an opportunity for you to hear from two of our new faculty members here at the School of Pharmacy, Dr. Gannett Monk and Dr. Michaela Leffler. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy this edition of Pharmacy Focus. Welcome, Michaela and Gannett. How are you all doing? Doing great. Thank you. I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Well, we're so excited that we have an opportunity to talk and have our audience hear a little bit from you. Um, I always say you can't have a school without students but the quality of your school is based upon your faculty and your staff. And so we think that you all are just wonderful quality pharmacists and academicians and we're glad you joined our team. But I think it would be great for our audience to learn a little bit more about you and your backgrounds. So let's start with Michaela. Michaela, tell our audience where you're from, um, your areas of specialty and interests. Okay. Yeah, um, my name is Michaela Leffler. I am originally from Buffalo, New York. Um, I did my undergraduate work at Gannon University in Erie, Pennsylvania. After that, I actually came to the University of Charleston School of Pharmacy here. Um, I graduated in 2014, um, so I'm a proud alum. And I recently completed two years of residency. I did my first year general residency um, at CAMC, Charleston Area Medical Center here in Charleston, and then I completed my second year um, PGY2 residency in geriatric pharmacy. Um, and I completed that in June, so I just started here in July. Um, and I'll be, my one area of interest, of course, is geriatrics and also mental health. So I'll be teaching some of the mental health courses this year. Wonderful, wonderful. So Dr. Monk, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background. Okay. okay. I am a somewhat of a familiar face around the University of Charleston School of Pharmacy. I uh, taught here from 2008 until the end of 2013, as you know. Um, I had an opportunity to start a new business uh, for Charleston Area Medical Center at that point uh, in sterile compounding, uh, home infusion. Um, something I'd always wanted to do was run a business on my own. So I uh, went away from the school for about two and a half years and then uh, have had the opportunity um, over the course of the last few months to come back to the University of Charleston uh, School of Pharmacy. I'm thrilled to be back. I graciously appreciate your opportunity to let me come back. So, um, my areas of focus um, have been sterile compounding, so I've always taught the sterile compounding course here. Um, I also have a pretty strong background in community pharmacy practice. Uh, that was my practice site when I was here before. Uh, so. Uh, interacting with patients, counseling with patients, working with patients to try to help them solve their um, lifestyle changes that they may need to become healthier and those types of things uh, are, are my specialties, I suppose. Wonderful, wonderful. So Michaela, what, um, what do you think encouraged you or motivated you to look at academia and teaching? Yeah, um, well, when I was in my PGY1 and PGY2 residencies, I had the opportunity to actually do some guest lecturing, um, actually here at the University of Charleston, and I loved that um, experience. That was one of my favorite things to do. It wasn't, it didn't feel like work, it was exciting for me. So whenever I, you know, was looking for uh, positions at the end of my PGY2 year, uh, one of my strong interests was academia, and so I was very excited to be able to come back. Wonderful, wonderful. So mental health and geriatrics, are they um, a marriage together? Do you see a lot of coexistence between the two? Absolutely. Um, you know, geriatric patients often, I mean, they suffer just as much from, you know, depression and other mental health disorders, um, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, just as much as any other population. And then also you have to um, kind of cope with the dementia, Alzheimer's disease as well, which um, comes along with behavior. So I think that they are married. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> so Dr. Monk, I remember uh, when you were here before, you had a very uh, involved role with our Boy Scout um, opportunity, which was, I believe, in 2013? That's correct. The yes. summer of 2013, and what was that all about? Well, uh, in 2013, uh, just so happened where we uh, find ourselves in West Virginia, that was the first time that 
the, the Boy Scouts new facility uh, called the Summit Vector Reserve, uh, which is just south of Charleston, uh, had hosted the National Boy Scouts uh, Jamboree. Uh, traditionally, it's every four years, has been for decades. Mm -hmm. It's always usually been in Washington, D.C. on government property. The Boy Scouts finally were able to secure land of their own here in West Virginia. Uh, they realized what a great opportunity it was uh, with all the natural things that we have around us. So when that National Jamboree came to West Virginia, they came to look for partners as to things that they could uh, expose these Boy Scouts to who would be there for about a week, week and a half. Uh, they have an area they call the Technology Quest Tent and lots of different companies from all over the country and world participate in that Technology Quest Tent. Things like NASA, things like Lego, you know, very large companies with lots of money and lots of resources. And uh, it was amazing that they asked the University of Charleston, specifically the School of Pharmacy, if we would be willing to go and have a booth. And we did. And we definitely felt like even though we were on, you know, limited resources compared to NASA or anybody else, <laughs> that we had a great opportunity to get in front of thousands of young Boy Scouts, um, explain to them what pharmacy is, what the University of Charleston School of Pharmacy is, you know, where we are and what our mission is. Uh, we had an opportunity to do that in various ways. We took our simulation mannequins there and had them be, uh, ha had the students have an opportunity, sorry, the Scouts have an opportunity to see those mannequins. Um, experience what asthma is, what an anaphylactic reaction is to say a bee sting. Uh, had the opportunity to explain to them how asthma works. Uh, they even got a chance to compound fake phlegm or yeah. mucus. And so all over the jamboree, everywhere you walked, you would see Boy Scouts carrying balls of green phlegm. That was compliments of the University of Charleston School of Pharmacy. Uh, so every four years we do that, we find ourselves one year away from the 2017 National Jamboree yes. and once again the Boy Scouts have asked if the University of Charleston School of Pharmacy would be interested and we certainly are so we're looking at what we may be doing this year. I don't know if we'll make balls of phlegm again. Uh, we're still waiting on some of the details. We know the, the focus this time will be STEM which is science, technology, um, engineering, and math and so we, uh, we want to see specifically what they're looking for and then how we can try to play our cards to um, parlay that into interest in pharmacy. So, Absolutely. so it was a great opportunity. Actually, I think everyone who participated enjoyed it and learned something mm -hmm. um, and went around and looked at the other uh, booths and it was pretty amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was, it was a great event and an opportunity to impact large numbers of persons that not just um, Boy Scouts but also their leaders, right? The, the, the Scout leaders and then they went back to their respective homes and could take a little bit of that learning and the technology that we incorporated into that event back with them. So um, it was fantastic and I know that there there were probably about 20 to 25 uh, School of Pharmacy faculty, students who volunteered their time to spend that time there to make that a success. And so um, what happens when you do good things, you're asked to do it again. And so, <laughs> so we look forward to that. Yeah. In those four years since that uh, jamboree, I've had countless numbers of Scoutmasters come up to me who remembered seeing me there, even yes. though I didn't know them, and telling me they took that opportunity to teach all their Boy Scouts how to use an EpiPen yes. for anaphylactic, yes. or they didn't even themselves know how to appropriately use an inhaler for a child who had asthma, and how grateful they were to them learn and then teach all their Boy Scouts. So Absolutely. I think we really uh, made quite an impact. impact. Absolutely, and I think that's, that's the beauty of our profession, right, that we can impact one life but then that one life can impact multiple lives, and so that ripple effect is, is very powerful. So Dr. Leffler, tell me, um, what would you say to a prospective student who's thinking about pharmacy? What would you tell them? What are the pros as you see it, and maybe some of the cons of, of professional pharmacy? Um, I think that, you know, I would tell a pr prospective student to keep an open mind. Um, I think that, that was something that you know, I really benefited from in my academic career. Um, I came in thinking that I was going to be a retail pharmacist and look where I am today. Um, but I always, you know, in the back of my mind thought, you know, there's a lot more out there. And I think that's the beauty of 
uh, the profession of pharmacy is there are so many opportunities, so many places that you can take your career, whether um, you, know, you want to work in the community um, with patients um, you know, in retail or you know, in, a, in a private business, or you want to do hospital work, clinic work. There are just so many options, and it's, that's what I think is really exciting about the profession of pharmacy is that you can really you know, drive your own career where you want to take it um, if you're willing to work for your goals. Um, I think that one of the, the cons, it's hard to think of a con just because I love being a pharmacist so much. Um, what would I say? I think that one of the cons is that I think pharmacists, we need to learn how to be our own advocates. Um, you know, I think that we are so beneficial to our patients and we just need to learn how to reach out even farther. I think that's one of the things that, as a profession, we need to work on. I would agree. Just, you know, yeah. we don't realize how much power and how much benefit that we have. And many pharmacists by nature tend to be humble and so tooting our horns, it seems like, oh no, we would never do that. Um, but in, in the reality of it is people do need to know how to better use us because we do have lots of skills that on the surface may not be known. Um, but uh, there's lots of, of patients who will say, yes, my pharmacist helped me not just with my medications, but they helped me link up with other resources in the community and, and other things like that. So I would agree with you. Yeah. yeah. So Dr. Monk, for current students, current students, what would be one piece of wisdom that you would like to impart to our current students? Hmm. Well, I think Dr. Leffler said a good thing as far as keeping an open mind. Um, I think I tell students the same thing. Keep an open mind about career, but also keep an open mind about how you will practice that career. Uh, we are in the midst of, and have been for probably 10 to 15 years of a major change in not just healthcare but pharmacy specific to healthcare. The Affordable Care Act has made a lot of great opportunities. Uh, some of those we haven't taken full advantage of yet. Um, we find ourselves in the world of pharmacy in the midst of um, some changes in the job force. Uh, may be perceived as a surplus of pharmacists. We got into that predicament because of our potential and our role that many healthcare professionals saw as where we will be practicing in the future as pharmacists. And there's going to be a huge need. And so we needed lots of schools to fill those needs. Right now we're sort of at that little twisting point where we haven't quite turned that corner, but we're close. And we have to make sure that uh, we keep an open mind about how we practice pharmacy. What I tell the students is don't don't expect what you see in a, in a pharmacy today to be how you'll practice in tomorrow, next week, next year, five years. It's going to dramatically change. Keep an open mind. Everything you learn could be potentially useful. Don't close any doors. Absolutely. Good. Wonderful pieces of wisdom and insight uh, to prospective students as well as our current students. And um, I just am appreciative of both of you guys for spending some time so that we can get your um, your thoughts, your perspectives, your background out to a larger community than just the School of Pharmacy. And so I appreciate your time. But more importantly, I appreciate um, your commitment to our students because our commitment to the students is really a commitment to society and, and the patients that they're going to serve. So thank you so very much for all that you have done thus far. But really, thank you in advance for all that you're going to do for the 16, 17 academic year and beyond. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.